Christian, how good does it feel to be a whole week, almost 100% ready to go, with a road game right ahead? Yeah, I think, I wish it was home, <laughs> uh, because, you know, there's something about our fans that, that get us going, and we tend to get better results uh, at home, but look, uh, a week for me to, to be able to, you know, sh sharpen up, shake off any of the rust, rust that I had, uh, and gain, gain a little bit more fitness, uh, and, and be a little bit more prepared for the Charlotte game is, is something that I've enjoyed, and, you know, getting the team and getting that energy back uh, within the team during the training week was, was really important for us. What do you expect out of this Charlotte team, the way they play in general at home? Yeah, it's a good team. Um, they haven't gotten the results that they've wanted. Uh, they play out of the back really well. I know they don't take risks um, during certain parts of the game, but uh, they're, they're a dangerous team with another good crowd, uh, a crowd that if you uh, play attacking football, they'll get behind them and uh, they'll certainly energize the team. Uh, but for us, you know, it's going to be a warm game uh, on turf. Uh, so we got to find ways to kind of slow the game down and, um, you know, take the sting out of the game at times. Are you 90 minutes fit? Do you feel ready to go 90? Uh, I would like to think I'm 90 minutes fit, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure what my minute restriction is, if I have one. Uh, just trying to go day by day and uh, let the, the experts kind of decide that. But uh, if you tell me, I'm, I'm ready to go. The last two months for you have been have been a long two months working back from, from the concussion. Can you kind of take us through the timeline and, and, and how this has kind of gone for you working back from, from you know something that isn't a muscle injury and not something like last year, but just like a head injury like this? Yeah, well, the concussion happened, I think, April 8th. Um, you know, and then the next day I kind of woke up with headaches, but didn't think anything of it. Um, and then the headaches just didn't go away. And so... Um, you know, I, I felt the need to, you know, say something and, you know, not put myself at risk. Uh, and then, you know, we had a couple setbacks where we started running a little bit more, more intensively, and um, the symptoms kind of got worse. So that, that that in itself was, was very frustrating because when you think concussion, okay, you think the worst is is when it happens, right? When the the the, the first day that that you kind of have those symptoms, but. Um, the way it lingered, it just made it even more frustrating and more frustrating. So it's great to be healthy now and um, feeling back like myself. You know, concussions are sort of in the public zeitgeist and, you know, with NFL and everybody talking about how, the importance of monitoring concussions and, and all that. Going through this experience for you, has it changed the way that, that you think you have and that, that, that I think uh, sports teams uh, around everywhere should treat players with concussions? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a bit. It was a wake-up call. Um, you know, it, it's it takes so much energy out of you. Um, you know, your personality is different. Um, your mood is different. Uh, your everyday life is different when you when you have a concussion. And uh, I really don't wish anybody to experience something like that. Um, and you know, the fact that we play a sport that you know kind of brings those types of danger is something to, to really focus and key on uh, because we got to make sure we educate ourselves on um, those traumatic injuries because no one knows how you're feeling. Only you know how you're feeling. So uh, you become really hyper-focused on, on your everyday senses. Uh, it hasn't just been about results not being there for Seattle. It seems like the performances haven't been up to the regular standard. How important is it to get that out of the way in this Charlotte game, especially knowing that there's going to be about 11 day break in between the next one. Yeah, uh, scoring goals has been our our tough part. I think during this spell, we haven't really scored goals. And uh, yeah, we've been okay defensively. There's there's games that we've leaked goals. Uh, but I think the biggest issue has been not scoring the goals that, that we uh, scored in the first 10 games. So uh, for us, it's getting back to that, right? Playing that attacking football and uh, making sure that we have a quality game um, because there, there's been a while since we've had a quality game and won. And so uh, combining the two is something that we're really focused on against Charlotte and uh, we can always rest after, you know, like you mentioned. So we got to leave it all out there. The concussion, it didn't happen when the ball hit off your head, right? Or you ran into it? How did no. it happen, so to speak? Yeah, it was a whiplash injury during the corner kick. Okay. Um, so my neck went back and 
uh, sometimes with uh, uh, whiplash neck injuries, um, you know, then the neck can play a huge factor in the way uh, symptoms linger or they kind of mimic those concussion symptoms. Uh, and, and that's what I've learned throughout this pro process because uh, as I had the concussion, as the, the, the concussion symptoms lingered on, uh, it, it was due to uh, my neck being in really bad shape. And so a lot of the focus was, was treating the neck. Christian, I just want to give you a take on Messi coming in, your thoughts on what that means for the league in general, and your individual take on it. Well, I think it's exciting for the league, uh, obviously. Uh, it's great that Messi, um, ch you know, chose this for himself, for his family, uh, to live in, in, a, in a great place. Um, it's obviously really exciting for our, our league, um, based on the ticket sales, uh, based on you know, having the best, for me, the best ever to play the sport in, in our league. And for us, it's, we're excited to compete against him, right? Uh, I know we don't play Inter-Miami this year, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we'll have to wait, but uh, this guy is definitely not retiring anytime soon. He has quality. Uh, you saw that at the World Cup, and I'm sure you'll see it during qualifiers as well. Brian said if, uh, if you guys face Miami next year, he'll throw you on Messi. Is <laughs> it one-on-one with me and Messi? What, what are you thinking going up against well, him one-on-one? I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe if he's 40, then, then we can talk. But this, this is the, the best ever to do it. Um, but I won't shy away from the moment if it comes. Uh, he's obviously an idol of mine, and um, you know I'll give it my best shot. You just, you, just, go ahead. you just said best ever for him. Is he number one in your book? For sure. Yeah. I mean, he solidified it with the World Cup and the way he, you know, carried, <laughs> carried Argentina in that World Cup. There's only one Lionel Messi, but, one, but, but but has there been a time where you're gonna face somebody that maybe you've idolized or you've kind of looked up to? Who, is there one player that comes to mind? Yeah. I mean, looking at watching Neymar play was unbelievable, and then being able to play against Brazil was was fantastic. Um, I mean, just another another extremely famous player, right? Uh, but then you've played against like Slatan or Pirlo or David Villa, guys that you watched as a kid. So, uh, but Messi's the best by far. So um, uh, that will be exciting. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, oh, appreciate it, guys. Man,